as I've demonstrated before, the year 2004 was something of a watershed for video games, with numerous highly acclaimed successful titles seen released that year, including tonight's subject, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which released on October 26 of that year, here in the US. While I initially wanted to have this video done on, on the actual 20th anniversary of that date, hey, I think I decided that given how much I love this title, as do many others, that it's one of those things better to get right than it is to get done quickly. Hey, especially given all manner of details I'm going to be discussing here. Here, it's definitely one I've been planning to talk about for a very long time, have actively been working out how to do who for months now. And and so here, as I will have often detailed before, I will get into why Grand Theft Auto Andreas is a favorite PS2 game, though I also acknowledge both 3 and Vice City are also in the top 10 as well, as as a, a one Carl C.J. Johnson once said, uh, shit, here we go again. The biggest factor in how I consider this game to be my all-time favorite is just how much you can do in the setting and just the sheer scale and scope of it all, how not only does it build up how it was done with Liberty City in 3 and Vice City in, well, Vice City, it definitely he managed to take influence from three major Western U.S. cities. These and I, with Los Santos being based on Los Angeles, San Fierro being based on San Francisco, and Los Venturas being based on Las Vegas. This, and even to this day, I am still impressed by how I'm just now finding out some of the Easter eggs that were in there previously, and just seeing how many stand-ins are really all locations and events. And we'll get into this more of the other points of this video, oh, but... Uh, it's definitely you know, one of those titles that you could go to these locations in real life and see the landmarks in the, the way they've been done. And with that in, in mind, I definitely look forward heard, to going over this even more. Or, and not just with the off-model drawings of Mickey and Pikachu I showed you in the Juguetes Regalos, literally toys gift shop there. Mm. One of the most, most key things to get right in any open world title is to make it enjoyable to play even when you're not on a mission and not only is is this an idea that here yeah, that the makers of these games excel at, it's also one that they definitely he he nailed in this particular game. Where even just this, as you've seen with some of my streams, like the simple joy of taking a drive around the city can be enjoyable. And and I also in. Oh, note that this might be a subconscious reason why I don't have any issue with RPG mechanics encroaching into games other uh, otherwise classified as RPGs, especially in terms to oh stat systems. I was like how you carefully can improve how you drive, how you fight, how you shoot, and yes, has been pointed out your own body type over the course of the game. And that actually is a useful skill. I mean, to try and get as much as you can early on in game, but not so much you actually end up uh, collapsing right there 
in the street going this is the big one and and that actually works out pretty well with building up the other stats of muscle stamina I even fairly recently, as was shown, had to spell up the lung capacity stat in order to undergo the amphibious assault mission. And even though some people split in mission design, I mean, it actually is not bad when they're useful for helping get a lay of the land and also for, for building up stats even further. Believe it or not, I actually did not have much trouble but with the Von Sider Tracks mission, given how much I had built up both the cycling and SMG stats as well. Believe it or not, it was actually a local liquor store that gave me a bit more or, or trouble, as did Small Town Bank, which should make a nice little segue into who my next point why I love this game so much. This game being released around the time when and games starting getting a lot closer to films in terms of their rating and acting production value, who this definitely is a noticeable sign of that. Especially even though they didn't directly call attention to the fact they had a lot of big name actors in their cast, you definitely could recognize quite a few of them. Um, um, with everyone from Samuel Jackson as the corrupt Officer Tenpenny, Penny, and David Cross uh, as the a model hobbyist Zero, uh, who almost is as neurotic as, as his role in most developments. Not quite there, but close, I would say. Hey. And there's also a few great performances from actors who are no longer with us, with yeah, the, the Ten Minutes Right Hand Man, Pulaski, being voiced by the late Chris Penn, Sean Penn's brother, and also oh, The Truth being voiced by Peter Fonda, so I guess that's from the timeline Easy Rider where he got everything he wanted. And as a rather their spunkily named named and pimp, we have the late great Charlie Murphy, Eddie's brother, who had a lot of great performances on Chappelle's show and the Boondocks, and also works quite well. Oh, from a satirical perspective, like, even though they definitely consulted with people to maintain authenticity of the setting and, and the characters within, there is definitely still a lot of elements that are seen in a very sardonic lens. That definitely is another way, even little details, like a title the developers were from Frost of Pond, as some of the terminology in-game has very much an English-English slant to it. Why you see things like car park instead of parking garage, flat instead of apartment building, and some of the pizza stack signs say take away instead of take out, which is still oh pretty entertaining no matter how I look at it, and also like how they include some um, other details I'll get to be addressing in a bit, but first. I want to go over one of the key facets that still, even with how long it took the more recent versions to actually get snuff, I still enjoy even their earlier forms. And even when this game first came out, it definitely managed to make a good showcase Striking a nice balance between I mean, like the stylized graphic novel look and feel, all that 3 and Vice City had with a bit more realistic bent to it as well. Uh, and even though some of it's a lot of products at the time, for that time it was actually quite impressive. And even 
And today I still like how distinctively, even in terms of setting, they make it where with uh, small Santos has a mixture of of smog that you'd see in real life LA of both natural and artificial kind of smoke. Oak, the more clear skies of the Bay of San Fierro and inclement weather patterns and of course the glitz and glamour lost in tourists as many many hotels casinos and even the burger shots looking like it would be not out of place as a Schumacher era Batman set piece he's at all rest his soul and with that in mind, I still like how distinctive uh, the appearances are of the, the main characters. They are definitely influenced by many you know, the actual time frames, popular rappers and actors. There's, and even Factory and, and the Fates they meet, I definitely will talk about a bit more of this in my next couple points, of course. One of the questions I've been asked myself before I pick up any game to play, or especially to actually add to my collection, is will I still be playing this after I clear it for the first time? Well, given how many times myself and others have brought it up, and how many times it's been memed, I can definitely say... The answer is yes to that question. I mean, given how much content is in this title, it's almost a given that, that when I first tried it when I was 13, so not long after it came out, that I was not going to find every single thing in there on my first playthrough. In fact, it's, there are some details I still recreate all the time, like how... It's not the exact game pad I use, but given how I play PlayStation version most often, how with the precision of action buttons actually showed how vital they are, like how far you move the stick shows how far you can walk, run, or just a stealth. I can still do some of the missions that are close to story that are you're robbing someone without spooking the old man once as I'm grabbing all the spoils. And also, how far you push the button depends on how fast your vehicle will go. And, but it can often take me quite a while to really, that's why I spend so much time between missions practicing driving and practicing with certain targets as well. And all that. And there's still other secrets that can be found. I mean, apparently I even right before I started making this video, I still am just now getting the fact that there are horseshoes and pearls hidden all around the game's map, of course, so always something to enjoy. And 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 some of these bits were likely intentional, like how there's one mission called Body Harvest. That's, Nice nod to one of Rockstar's previous games, back in the so-called DMA Designs, with it being like a precursor to what they would do in this franchise later on. Others are a bit more... or... actually slipped by me. I think in hindsight, to me at least, the occurring character Catalina seems like a Western-made tsundere, since I first played this game, I got deeper into anime around the same time. Again, this being like the mid two thousands and all. Oh, and even with some of the track changes in this each version is made, yeah, I still like how the wide variety of songs have gone in there. Not just ones I saw at the time period, such as Ice Cube's "Day Was a Good Day," "Living Colors," "Cult of Personality," and Doctor Dre's "Nothing But a G Thing," but also ones that are definitely still hold up even like in the time when the game came out so there's Leonard Skinner's Freebird, Boston Smoking, and Cool McGain's Hollywood Swinging. So with that I'll definitely be closing this up on a major her her one that 
not just on a personal level, but on a near industry wide level, even. Well, it is definitely true that at both three and Vice City, they definitely help start shifting in in the impact of the open world sandbox genre and establishing the franchise a major player in this business. This game definitely cemented it, and also subsequently it had me. He placed the team as one of the major earth standards of quality among these titles. I mean, many have tried to who encroach upon its success and acclaim, but few have truly succeeded. You know what I mean? And with that in mind, the the sheer amount of detail in this title definitely had an impact on the next main number installments, Lens 4, as well as its pair of expansions, Episodes of Liberty City. 5, with taking the Los Santos here and actually spreading that level of detail to the entire map. And of course, the upcoming 6, which is definitely set to have Vice City in that same vein. I certainly hope that they can keep up this level of innovation, and I can definitely say that would be a title that would officially clinch me getting a, a PS5 once that comes out, to be certain. And with that in in mind, I also note that the same around the same time frame this game came out, it also had, had, had a couple other titles such as a video game based on Spider-Man 2, which was excellent in its own right. right. Easily being best in the best based on the best of the standalone films and arguably being the best as Stanley Spider-Man game until Insomniac ones came out, and also, oh, another her game in that caliber that managed to who oh, get released in the hype's lean up to oh this title, oh the Simpsons hit and run and. I think the only reason, my main reason why hey, that hasn't gotten like a rehydrated version like version like Spongebob or Key Bottom has is due to rights issues between and the people who own the show as well as the people publishing the games. Maybe we'll see something once tapped out goes dark, but I'm gonna hold my breath. And with that in mind, this is definitely a a game worthy of being called my favorite on PS2, selling 28 million copies on system alone, own, which in itself currently holds a record of the best selling console ever. However, I did get ported to multiple subsequent generations, and even getting intermittent ports on mobile phones, owns though. Yeah, and even with the initial rough patch of the fifth edition with several elements such as Ryder apparently having a bad case of rickets since I was away from away from the Grove. It definitely a it was one I play every single chance I get. And I also am admittedly enjoying version 1.07 film, which is much closer to what the devs had in mind, I would say. Even with the whole drama about who was actually responsible for it. Anyway, that's hard to say for now. I definitely will be a have do as much as I can and for December to close this year. Obviously, solid note in the circumstances, and I will definitely see you all later. Air Grove Street for life. Mm -hmm.